Yeah. New, new. We'll get there. New, 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 new. We'll go fast through these things. New, 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 All new. right. First up, batteries. We have two coin cell batteries. Um, we don't actually really use these in any of our projects, but they're so useful that I figured we would carry them anyways. This is a 2016 battery. Um, often these are tiled, two of them, like one on top of each other, to, to fit into a 2032 holder, and that will make a six volt power supply. Um, they're not a lot of milliamps, I think it's only like 20 milliamp hours or something, but you know, they're super, super skinny, and when you need one, you need one. Next this up. is the CR2450. Actually, I want to show this on the overhead, because it, it's very hard to see the scale until you see it. So it's this gigantic coin cell, and um, or a very small lady in it. Or a very small lady. And, um, you know, it's, th it's three volts, it's non uh, rechargeable. Uh, it's very handy when you, you need to be able to source quite a bit of current. I think it has oh, a thousand milliamp hours, maybe? Or like 600 milliamp hours? It's quite a bit. So um, I do see these once in a while being used. And, and they're like $8 if you go to Dwayne Reed. So we have them for a couple bucks. Okay. All right, next up. Moving right along. Moving right um, along. We have these books. Do you know about you? Did you order these? Yeah, probably a million years ago. So this is Ninja. It's a kids book. It's about like ninja hackers. Yeah. Um, I think I asked Stella to review these with her kids, and she said they were good. And then we got them. Yeah, and there's like a, a workbook too. I don't know. It's it's fun. Um, I like more new advanced books and like there's yeah. there's projects and, and stuff you can but, do. I mean, like look at this. They're making books for if we were kids. Like there's mainframes, computers. Yeah. Hack the planet. Yeah, everything. Yeah, look like, at you. Like you can. It's can, code cracking. It's really neat. This is the kids that are gonna come out of this round are gonna be probably pretty cool. All right, let's keep going. All right, <laughs> what else we got? A little sad. Um, we have feather um, stackies. So these feather are stackies. These are stacking headers for feather boards, and we'll talk about feather boards in a little bit. Um, but I can show this on the overhead actually. Yeah. That's well, let me hit. Let me go through these photos, and then we'll hit the. Okay. Overhead. So th these are the the feather stacky headers on a feather. Yes. Here. So, I like that we're starting to get. So this is an Ada logger with feather stacky headers. Mm -hmm. That's hard to say. I, I know. There. Okay. Well, there's right. there's a, it's an ecosystem. Right. So for example, normally you'd get like a feather, and it's like this. Um, and you could like, you know, plug, you know, you could put headers onto it so you can plug into a breadboard, for example. And this works really great. You know, you're like, okay, I'm plugging into a breadboard and I like my NeoPixel. But like, let's say you have um, some circuitry you want to plug on top. If you have stacking headers, then you can plug stuff on top of it and kind of like a shield for an Arduino or a Pi Hat. So these let you also plug into the breadboard um, while you have some circuitry on top of it. So I don't know. I think that's good. Okay. Very handy. A good uh, accessory. Solder it in when you right. get your feather. Here is an Adafruit board. This is the LISC 3DH triple axis accelerometer. We have actually quite a few triple axis accelerometers, but this one is really, really low cost and is very easy to use. It has I2C and SPI, which is an, um, not usually you only have one or the other. Um, the cost, the price is really good. It's one of the least expensive accelerometers, like 10 bit. And it has a couple other cool little things built into it. For example, it has tap and double tap detection. So when you tap it or you attach it to something and then you, you thwack it, it can detect that. It knows like, oh, there was like a pulse. And so mm. you can have tap and double tap. Okay. It also has um, three analog digital converter pins. They're only like one to two volt range, but um, you know, if you just need some uh, analog inputs and you don't have some on your board, it's a, it's a really easy way to add analog inputs. Um, and it doesn't use uh, clock stretching, which the MMA accelerometers do. We basically kept seeing this chip in every single wearable teardown. If you watch the wearable teardowns that I do with Becky, this accelerometer was in everything. Like literally every single wearable that had sensing in it had one of these. So I was like, okay, obviously there's something about this chip that's great. So I picked them up and yeah, they're a good workout. Okay, these photos are great. I can imagine a news organization like CNN using them one day to illustrate something they wanted to convey. Okay, next up, um, this is almost the star of the show tonight. Yay, it's the Arduino Zero. Yeah, but, it's the real Arduino but, but Zero. But it's not the star of the show tonight. There's another product that's going to be started tonight. I know, but this is it, Yeah, exciting. but this is very close. So this is the Arduino Zero. So this is the SAM21, uh, SAM D21 G18 breakout with an e-debug system. From the real Arduino. Simpsons dip. This comes from Arduino.cc, it's made in Europe. Um, we had a, quite a while ago purchased um, zero, M0s from Arduino.org. We had the purchase order, they came in, and we were kind of stuck with them, so we still have them, and they're on sale right now. 
uh, until we sell out. But um, we also, you know, if you're if you're if this is your first one, I would recommend getting one of these zero boards because um, they work a little bit better. They have a couple of bugs fixed and stuff. Um, well, it's a Cortex M zero. Only buy stuff from Arduino.cc. Sorry, folks. Like. You got to do it. Yeah. Also, it's a much better. It's a better better board. I mean, yeah. there's, there's multiple reasons. Yeah. Multiple reasons. Um, so this has uh, uh, a Simpson Stab chip on it, the Atmel E debug. So it can program it. You can program it. You don't need to like a bootloader programmer if you want to mess around bootloaders. Um, it has native USB. It also has um, USB on the go. Although I don't know if there's any code for it yet. Uh, it has an um, analog output. It has a DAC output, not just ADCs. It has tons of ADCs, tons of timers. Um, it runs at 48 megahertz. It has a 32 kilohertz real-time clock as well that it, it uses to synthesize the 40, 48 uh, megahertz. Uh, so it can do extremely low power. And, and that's basically what it's really good at. It's extremely low power. Like if you want something that's fast, has a lot of flash, has a lot of RAM, and you're okay with using 3.3 volt logic, this is a really great upgrade from the Uno. It's definitely a leap above like the Leonardo. It's, it's not as fast as the Duo, but it has many of the same capabilities being a Cortex M0. Anyways, I'm so glad we finally have these. Um, really I'm awesome. really, I love this chip, the Atsam D21. It's, it's a great chip and makes for an excellent next generation after the Uno. Okay, and like I said, the star of the show tonight, besides maybe the, the Zero, and Neo, Yay. is one of these boards. It's the blue fruit. We got like three stars. Okay. We have many stars. All right, this is it. This is the Feather Blue Fruit. So we've been coming out with a Feather board every week, and these are basically boards that all use the same chipset, the same pinout, the same size, but they change out what accessories come with it. So it, they all have an Atmega 32U4 running at eight megahertz. Basically, they're just like our Flora, and it's very similar to the, the Leonardo chip, same chipset. It's a board with the Arduino IDE. This one, um, this board comes with Bluetooth Energy as our Blue Fruit LE module, and here's the demo. I don't know whose hand that is. Is it Yarrow's? Yeah, um, cool. It's a cool hand, got really great jewelry, and um, they're showing how our Blue Fruit app can be used to change the color of NeoPixel Ring. Basically, it's a way to have any tablet, phone, or even a modern computer, such as a Mac um, OS X or Windows 8 or higher, can communicate wirelessly. You don't need any extra things. It's like it's natively um, supported. So you don't have like, you don't need like two XBs. Um, it has USB and uh, built-in battery charging. You can use it with a LiPo battery, and it will automatically do the power switch over and all that good stuff. I have demo. Yeah, I got a couple wanted, more photos. Yeah, there's some yeah. nice feathers. You a nice logo that Boost Yen designed. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have accessories. I mean, we have these stacking headers, and it's not too surprising. We're going to have feather wings that are that plug on top that will add more capability. So if you want to control motors, for example, yeah. we might show something on right. some. And we have a Blue Fruit app that you can use. And I want to show the Blue Fruit app on like Android, Android, or iOS, or iOS. And we also have a desktop. Um, version, as, as a minimal version for yeah. right. Mac OS, OS 10. So, yeah, this is the demo. So I didn't test this beforehand, so I hope it just works, but you, you can power it up. Yeah, you and can And then um, you can charge it over micro USB, but it's, it's already charged up. And, you know, this where the lady says, hey, I'm waiting. Um, so, okay, disconnected. So then I open up my app, and then I find the Blue Fruit LE, and I'm going to connect with controller. And with the controller, I'm going to use the color picker. And then I can, oh man. What? Oh, shoot, sorry, I have another one. Sorry, I have two blue fruits. You have two blue fruits, that's, that's the very thing. embarrassing, very embarrassing. Okay, sorry, let's do this again. That's cool that um, that's even possible with, uh, I might have to, um, with our demos. That we I know, because I have, I have two demos. Yeah. All right, hold on. Hold you on have multiple second. demos. I have, is it, one second. Okay, let's try it again. And so that's the one there. Yeah, I had to completely power this off. Oh no, another blue fist. Okay, I got it. Whew. All right, I can uh -huh. do this. Yay! Okay, Whew. so uh, pretend that last thirty seconds didn't happen. Just erase it from your mind. No, that's cool that you can show how easy it is to switch between devices. This is a feature. For yeah, me. but unfortunately, I named them the same thing because I didn't. I didn't change it. You can change the name, but I, I didn't do it for the demo because no, name a your Bluetooth devices or children the same thing. Okay. Very uh, confusing. So this just shows you a demo of like, you know, the color picker, which is just the easiest demo to, to show off. Um, but we have other things like control pad, which will let you uh, send like buttons. And then another thing that's really neat is you can turn on data streaming from the device. So for example, um, quaternion data of the orientation of the tablet can be sent to 
the Bluetooth Energy. So you make it, and, and you can also send GPS location data. Um, you, you can connect with, you can update firmware over the air, you can do the controls which I showed you, pin IO, which basically lets you turn each pin on and off and like analog reading and control. UART, which basically lets you do a direct RXTX. So basically kind of like an XB, you just send data back and forth. Um, and so the other demo I had, so I'm gonna unplug this one because that's confusing. And this is the demo that I accidentally connected to. So this is a little um, robo friend so this one has a um, blue fruit feather here, and it has the um, stacking headers on it. And then over here, I have a, it's not out yet, don't ask. It's uh, a motor wing. So it basically allows you to control two motors. And these are two DC motors that look like servos. And then you can turn on the app. So hold on, scan peripherals. OK. So connect to this new one, and then I'm going to go to the controller, but this time I'm going to go to control pad. Can you just make sure that this doesn't go to the blue? It'll be OK. OK, so. Oh, <laughs> to the end. Yeah. OK. Yeah, go to the end. OK, so I'm going to press this button. Yeah. So yeah, when, oh. I, when I control it, it it's yeah, wirelessly controlled. You can also control. do it like this, and I can. OK. So it can turn left or right. And then another thing that James added is he actually had the accelerometer. So when you tilt, so hold it up. Oh, neat. So when you tilt, it'll yeah. move with the tilt. I don't want it to like run around the floor. Oh, but you can basically, you know, cool. you point forward and it goes forward. And that uses the accelerometer inside of the iPad or Android device to send to it. And then the 32U4 reads yeah. that data from the Bluetooth connection and then controls the motors. So you can see you can get like really, and this only took him like a half an hour, and he like yeah. never really programmed. Check this out if you look close, folks, you can see like some type of double wing thing going on there. I guess that's yeah, a it's not a double out wing. Yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, yeah, you know what? Look how cute this is. Put these under. We're gonna run over a couple minutes. Oh, okay. Wow. So look at how cute these little feathers are. Look at this little menagerie. Yeah, we got a little like, boards of a feather. Like, look at how cute we this is. We have like the this huzzah is, feather. This is neat. You can make a little car out of it. You've been busy, Lady Ada. I was really busy for a couple weeks. Yeah. But yeah, we All basically right. have like a huge family of these feather boards because this is a common thing. And I'm going to go over, but I think it's worth talking about. So building something like this, it's like you don't want to have like three Arduino shield, like Arduino, now a battery shield, now a motor shield, now a Bluetooth shield. It's like they can be much smaller. Like I basically packed the entirety of our motor servo driver, which can do yeah. two steppers or four motors. And like most of it's empty space on the Arduino shield. So I just took out all the prototyping area and it just fits into this and you can, I've done a bunch of motor control projects, and then it has Bluetooth and battery charging built in. So this is like you're done. Like you know, you add you add a little chassis, and now you have a Bluetooth robot that like, you know, we had James built in like yeah. a half an hour. I was like, oh, just put together the because I was actually testing out the sample. I was like, oh, just put together the little robot yeah. friend. And after he finished, he's like, oh, do you want me to make a little driving robot with the, the blue fruit feather? And I was like, I mean, it's four o'clock, yeah. and our show starts in a couple hours, but go ahead, and he finished it before five. Yeah, being able to make a Bluetooth robot in a half an hour is kind of the lead story with stuff like this. Like, I mean, that's it, kind of what you want to do. It's just like, yeah, it's, it's super easy. Yeah, and if you can't, you're like, I hate electronics. But if you can, you're like, I made a robot get a control with my phone in half an hour. Yeah, so the idea is like, you know, then, you know, you can stack more wings on top. So it's like an OLED wing or a NeoPixel wing or like you can add Wi-Fi. I mean, like you can, you can keep adding as much capability as you want. And I, I like the, the, the blue, we had the Bluetooth micro before, the Bluefoot micro, but I think adding the battery charging built in is like yeah. what makes this work. And it's the feather, it's gonna be the standard um, shape and size. Anything will work in it. It's gonna be great. Anyways, yay. You did it. I just spent like two months on this. Yeah, okay. you did it. Okay. <sighs> All right, so with that, guess what, Lady Ada? Yeah. You did new products. Whee. Good work. That was a demolicious. Yeah, you did new products. That's what you did. I, I did them and I did you them. You did it.